Hello and welcome to my channel on human design. Well, this is a special episode and um, I'm going to be giving you some information uh, that a lot of you won't know, as well as looking at the mechanics of human design in a particular way. But first of all, I want to thank you uh, for the comments and for the dialogue that took place when I discussed human design and AI. Um, I learned some new things. I followed some links. Very interesting. Thank you. And in that spirit, I want to provide you with some links myself in this video to something that I think you're going to find absolutely bloody magic. So for this episode, I want to go back to the theme of plants. And I was very pleasantly surprised in how many of you really got interested and viewed that uh, first video on the design of plants and uh, went on to look at the design of all forms, not just humans, uh, which was, of course, related to it. So well done on that. Great to see your uptake. And today it's uh, just begun to rain after uh, a lot of days of really fine weather. And I've been loving it. I've been out in the garden doing all kinds of things. And this is what I really want to talk to you about. What happens when we do go out in the garden and work with plants? Well, let's have a look at the form of plants. The plants contain three channels, the channel of power, the channel of perfected form, and the channel of exploration. Now, one of the things about exploration uh, as a channel for me is important because it contains the 10th gate, just as perfected form does. So when I'm around 10th gate people, it imprints me, it affects me. Why? Because I have the integration channel, every single gate, the 34, the 57, the 20, but not the 10. So for me, plants bring in the 10 through the channel of exploration and 10 through perfected form. There is a education for me in working for with plants. There really is. And there will, there will be for many of you as well. I know some of you will not be at all interested in this subject and you can flip and watch something else. But, but for those of you who are, you're gonna find some very interesting information in this. So firstly, let me talk about the missing 10th gate in my own chart and why it is healing for me to work with that theme and with that energy and the fact that that is actually available in plants. Whenever you have a single gate connected to a fixed center, a colored in center in your chart, you're always looking for the other side. You know, you're here to learn all about the other side, all the different frequencies of what's in that other gate all the different lines you're going to meet in this life. And what is the 10th gate? The 10th gate is the gate of individual behavior. It is also the gate of loving oneself, loving oneself in being able to behave in your own unique way. Now, I don't have the 10th gate, so I don't know how to behave. You know, that behavior is something that is of interest to me in lots of different ways. While working with plants, I get to have that energy given to me, that theme given to me while I'm working with them. I want you to think about what it is to be a projector. And some of you will be projectors. But what does a projector really want? A projector really wants to be seen. They want to be recognized. They want to be appreciated. And plants have perfected form as a projector channel within their matrix. I defy any human being not to smile when they see a plant that they've grown from seed become something that blossoms and gives them the fruit or the vegetables or the color or the beauty. You see, perfected form contains within it a freshness. Anyone that has that knows that. There is a freshness. There is a lifting up from the beauty of what comes through perfected form. And plants in their own way are perfected form all around us. You know, it is a healing thing for us to be connected 
with the spleen in perfected form for those that don't have it it's it's uplifting to see things blossom to see things move and grow and can be of direct benefit to us both through the food and the beauty but also in the action through the channel of power to use your energy to be involved in helping the plants to really grow well in preparing the ground for them in supporting them where they need it it's fantastic it gets our energy going and the channel of exploration you learn to love yourself when you're around unique behavior you learn to love who you are uniquely when you're working with plants think about it you know you're putting i put out my energy in the 34 but i don't know how to behave it is the plant through the the tender roots when i shake the soil from them or through the structure of the plant that demands that i plant it in a certain way that i treat it in a certain way that fits with it that grows and it's also tremendously rewarding in the last video i talked about generators needing to be rewarded for the energy that they put out and, and in many ways that might be financial but not in all ways the satisfaction of using one's energy for something that brings life to bloom is an amazingly satisfying thing to do as all of you who are gardeners know and i'm just rejoicing in the fact that i've had a chance to do that in this good weather now i mentioned there were two things that i wanted to bring to you that may be very new to you something that i'm experimenting with um i'm a one three as many of you know i'm an investigator um discoverer if i put it that way and i love to try different experiments with something that interests me well for the last few months i've been experimenting with electroculture and this is a way of using copper wire and magnetizing the soil in which plants grow it's very easy to do here's something i prepared earlier a simple stick with a copper uh, wire run through it now i've used three millimeter copper wire you can use two millimeter one millimeter there's all kinds of th thicknesses and i'm experimenting with the effects of the different thicknesses at the moment but the key thing is to wrap it around the stick with a point going up into the atmosphere and a point going down into the earth you put that in the soil and you watch what happens um, i had a little uh, plant growing on the side of a wall in a little pot i put one of these into that pot and within a few days four new plants had come i had to move the whole thing into a bigger plot, pot and they they're really growing strongly i include a photo for you to see of what's happened and i'm using copper and sticks and using copper wire in different ways uh, to grow things faster and it's incredible I mean it's the energy of the kitchen where I have uh, some of these plants has lifted tremendously it, it surprises me when I go in there now because I oh this feels good you know what's going on well you know we're taking energy from the ether we're magnetizing the soil we're increasing the life force in that room simply by using that simple technique and there are other techniques that you can learn about this uh, I'm learning a lot from um, an Instagram site called uh, Cultivate Elevate and I'll put the link in the descriptions below and something else <laughs> um, this was brought to me by a, a dear friend uh, a few months ago and I've been looking into Veda Austin's work Veda Austin is a water uh, crystallographer basically she has found that there is a direct effect of human thought on water so she'll have a photograph or something she's looking at and thinking about with water nearby and she finds that that picture of whatever it is she's thinking or showing or looking at is reflected in the water when you crystallize the water in a petri dish for about 45 seconds just a, the first freeze kind of freezes the frame of thought 
I mean, it's an amazing thing to think about, you know, how much of us is water, 70% or whatever of us is water, and everything needs water. And water is that one thing that cannot die. I mean, you heat it up, it turns to steam, it condenses, it comes back again. It's been here forever. And there is this way that humans can actually communicate with it. I know that sounds far out to some of you, but if you check out the link in the description to vedaaustin.com and you watch her video and you go into her site, you'll see what I mean. It's some amazing stuff, a real mind opener to the magic that is possible out there, that is everywhere. And in all this, um, this control and this uh, interference with uh, our normal lives, the food chains and the uh, the various control mechanisms that are coming in. I think it's very important now for those of you who want to and those of you who who are able to, to grow your own food, to become more independent and working with electroculture and understanding our relationship to water. And if you want to go back to Dr. Emoto's research on ice crystals and putting thoughts into water and seeing the water crystals reflect the thoughts and the energy that we're putting into water, the link becomes clearer and clearer. In my view, Veda Austin has taken it even further. Um, as you'll see, I'll let you discover it. I'll let you go on that journey. It's not for me to represent her work. It's simply for me to point to it and to say, wow. You know, one three loves to be in awe awe and wonder when the jaw goes huh? and I tell you when I watched her stuff when I saw what was going on it was really one of those so I want to bring that to you as well and uh, you can participate in that magic so really this is just a plug to return again away from the AI uh, focus back to what really matters to us in our individual life and that is a relationship with the food that we eat, with the plants that are around us, with the other life forms that are around us. A human being does not exist alone. And a human being can be elevated very easily by the growing of plants in their own dwelling. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, do check out the links. And uh, I will see you again very soon with something completely different. Bye-bye for now.